Hello everyone, it is I, Mark Major. Yes, that Mark Major, and I am here at the physical location known as the Action Figure Torium. Now, in the past, I did a video, wonderful video, in which I unboxed a 21st Century Toys Ultimate Soldier uh, British Paratrooper World War II one six scale, and I compared it to the same offering that Hasbro G.I. Joe has and did a little, you know, contrast, compare, that sort of thing with the two. Went back and forth sort of showing you how each of them is good at this thing and good at that thing. Well, we're going to do a bit of an addendum to that video today. Um, it seems that I have recently acquired, yes, this guy, new in box from Dragon Models. It is a 1-6 scale British paratrooper named Ian, and uh, we're gonna take this guy out of the box and we're gonna put him up against the G.I. Joe and the Ultimate Soldier. I'm gonna go through the bodies, the head sculpts. We're gonna look at the different uh, clothing selections on them. We're gonna look at the different accessories and we're gonna just, just kind of tell you real quickly in a short video sort of um, what the pluses and minuses of each one are. And it should be, I think, a lot of fun. I love these guys. They're my favorite guys. If you've ever seen that movie, A Bridge Too Far, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go look up some clips on YouTube of A Bridge Too Far, specifically any of the stuff with, um, oh, I would say uh, Sean Connery in it is a, is a good place to start. And uh, that will tell you everything you need to know about these action figures. So stick around. All right, these guys are on the bench behind me. Let me switch over to that cam. And uh, I will move this so that you can see me. All right, getting up, walking over. You can see hands in the frame. Everyone who's used to hands in the frame videos, exhale, it's gonna be all right. We're, we're in safe space again. Okay, this looks like the mustache brigade. It's weird, isn't it, folks? Here we have what is known as the G.I. Joe. Um, this guy is called the Royal Marine Commando. Technically, not a British paratrooper, more of a guy who would have been sort of uh, left to run up on the beach and see how far he can make it. One of those D-Day type guys, you know, the saving, saving Private Ryan beach scene, one of those dudes. But he's basically the British... Uh, British airborne guy. He's got all the same gear. The only difference is he comes with a little different uh, beret, colored beret than the other guys. Okay, then in the middle, this is made by 21st Century Toys. It's their line called Ultimate Soldier. These came out in about 2000. This is their British paratrooper. You can already see that he's got a lot of stuff on him, a lot more than, than this guy over here. And then next to it is the most recent edition. This is Ian, according to the box. This is made by Dragon Models. Dragon Models, for those of you that don't know, I have a video on called What is Dragon Models? These guys used to make specifically sort of uh, model vehicles, but when the popularity of 21st Century Toys came about, um, in the early 2000s. Well, Dragon Models got in on it as well, and they made even more detailed, albeit expensive, but more detailed figures um, and, uh, and gear and kit that comes with them than the Ultimate Soldier. And in some ways, it's because of these guys that the Ultimate Soldier sort of got its lunch eaten. Hasbro, of course, is indestructible, and they'll be making action figures forever. Even after the, uh, the place is bankrupt, they'll still be making guys. Okay, so let's just go through real quick like and tell you a little bit about the bodies on each of these in case you're wondering which guy is the one to get for you. The G.I. Joe figures prior to like about 2000 had really terrible 1-6 scale bodies. And you can tell because they have these hands that are like sort of frozen like this, okay? Ultimate Soldier came along and started making much more articulated, better action figures, which caused G.I. Joe to up their game, and they came out with this body called the Super Articulated. And you can tell which one is a Super Articulated because they have uh, fingers that uh, 
that will close so that you can put a gun in their hand and in fact the trigger figure alone has its own articulation so if you see one of these you know it's one of these hands you know it's a super articulated one now if you are somebody who is trying to kit bash together one six scale action figures and you're looking for a really good buck that is to say a generic body with which to put head sculpts and clothing on look for cheap gi joes that have those hands and you will not go uh, go astray. In fact, a good place to look for them are on the uh, Lucasfilm Star Wars 1-6 toys that started coming out in the 2000s. You can find the super articulated fingers, hands, etc., bodies, and those guys. I recently in a, picked up a Count Dooku who had one of those bodies, and that's how I learned that uh, they were just taking all those bucks and using them for G.I. Joe and Star Wars. Now, the 21st Century Toys guys, and um, any of these guys could fall over at any time, because, um, you know, they're, uh, they're horribly balanced in terms of, like, their center of equilibrium. It's one of the reasons why people really actually kind of enjoy the one twelfth scale is they have a better sense of balance but this guy has a very articulated body in terms of like the knees and the legs everything swivels and bends and rotates um, but they've got kind of the old school there he goes he's got sort of the old school um, G.I. Joe looking hands he's got this kind of generic sort of grip you can see there Let's see if we can get this guy back in uh, in line he kind of wants he's sort of at his best when he's kind of got his stomach out and uh, let's see if this guy can stand on his own as well now these guys the dragon models bucks are amazing they just are fantastic in terms of posability and keeping their pose and keeping their stance he of course did come with this um, really unique kind of uh, a uh, base that's just sort of a little kind of plastic u-shaped thing that his boot goes into and that's kind of all you really need to get them balanced so the way that you can tell if you've got one of these guys say you pick up someone something at a thrift store or a garage sale and you don't know if it's dragon models or gi joe or whatever um, the arms actually click and you can hear it on my mic And that is a good indicator. Also, the heads, um, most of these heads, like the G.I. Joe heads, are squishy. These heads on these guys are generally uh, pretty solid, pretty rough in terms of uh, um, their manufacture. They're, um, they look like they're wood or something. They have a certain sort of look to them, and, and you can kind of spot the heads after you've seen a few of them. Um, they don't have the squishy heads like the other guys. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the faces on each of these guys. As you can tell, there's something about um, having the same haircut and the same mustache on each guy. It's really the look of the British paratroopers in World War II. They all look like Sean Connery for some reason reason and uh, I think there actually is some um, I think there is a Sean Connery British paratrooper action figure out there that I believe a company called Dragon and Dreams or just known as DID makes I think they're the guys behind that I don't think it's an officially licensed one I think it's just kind of a copy look-alike and uh, those things are typically really expensive and uh, so the chances of actually probably picking one up on the cheap is pretty uh, nil as far as I can tell but you never know you might come across one in a junk store someday because if enough time goes by the original owners will abandon the stuff and the new owners won't know its value so as far as the gear that comes with all these guys um, the GI Joe came with some stuff like um, you know a little pistol and a belt and uh, you know little trenching tools and stuff like that the uh, ultimate soldier guy of course he's got a scarf he's got a belt he's got packs uh, on the back he's got 
uh, backpacks and a rope that goes around him and he's got a shovel and another pack and a canteen and a bag and a pistol and um, you know uh, he came with a couple of machine guns and he came with a bayonet and he comes with a helmet and he comes with a beret and this guy the Ian character from Dragon Models Comes with about the same amount of stuff. Comes with almost the exact same amount of gear. Looks almost exactly like the stuff that Ultimate Soldier does. Except that it is all soft goods. The Ultimate Soldier, he's got these sort of rubberized packs. These just look like cool packs. You can't actually open them and put anything in. Whereas everything on this guy, like so you can see there's this rope that goes around him. That ties in the back. That rope is just rubber. Everything on this guy is kind of cloth. He's got... Um, a whole bunch of uh, stuff that I haven't put on them yet, like this thing goes on. It, it looks exactly like the other guy's bag, except the other guy's bag is uh, plastic. This actually, you can see that it's got uh, a little like cloth that comes out that you could fold up into um, into a blanket, things like that. You know, he's got all the really fancy goods. In fact, if you look at the uh, the two guys' scarves they come with, one guy's scarf is really just a green piece of fabric that is twisted around the neck and the other guy's scarf is an actual um, kind of uh, scarf-like material that sort of has like a kind of a netting look to it. It's definitely a, an upgrade. It's definitely a step up. And uh, I would have to say that if it came down to it, um, you'd be hard pressed not to pick the Dragon Models above the other guys. The last thing I kind of want to hint upon is the uniforms. You can see that the G.I. Joe has these sort of cheap brown pants. He's got the um, shoes with the uh, sort of, I think that's called the spats that go over, or the, the coverings over the leggings. Those are rubber. Same thing with the Ultimate Soldier. He's got almost the exact same ones, but he's got better looking pants. They're olive green. Uh, this guy has got the rubber shoes, but he's got cloth. He's got cloth here. And uh, similarly with the tunics, right? Um, they're supposed to uh, go uh, underneath, which they do. You can see that, right, that is a thing that paratroopers did because when you jump out of the plane, if you don't have the tunic strapped down underneath you, it would fly up and, and possibly um, uh, impede your, uh, your vision and your movement to have the jacket billow up like that so it's strapped down. These guys all have them strapped down as well. They all have uh, little buttons on the, uh, the pockets. They all have uh, collars that sort of fold down or flip down. In the case of the G.I. Joe and the Ultimate Soldier, they actually have buttons on them, which is kind of nice. This guy actually has something really interesting. It's a little tiny zipper. I think that's kind of cool. Um, they all look about the same color wise uh, this guy's the GI Joe's a little bit brighter the ultimate soldiers a little bit muted and the dragon models is actually for his um, what would be uh, his brown color is actually kind of a, a red color he actually looks closer to the camouflage scheme that the Germans used on their tanks in 1944 summer he looks kind of a bit like the ambush color uh, but that's okay because then it makes it look like these guys are all sort of, um, you know, close enough to be like an army, to army build with them, but, uh, but different enough to make it look like there's not just the same figure over and over again, but with a different head swapped on them. So I think that that is pretty cool. I think it's worth uh, getting a few of these guys if you wanted to put together like a little sort of division. Um, I know for a fact that you can buy all the sort of uh, tunics and kit etc separately for the ultimate soldier guys you can get them in their own separate packs so you can take any action figure you want in the one six scale and turn it into this guy more or less and uh, i think that's kind of cool if you just want to make a lot of these guys some people are into that they're making a lot of figures and uh, just sort of position them around the camp you know telling stories whatnot um, I think the last thing that I want to point out, and, uh, and this to me might be um, one of the more important things, is the berets and headgear you get with these guys. 
So with the G.I. Joe, he came with the Green Beret, which is something that maybe the uh, British commandos wore. Um, the troopers, though, the paratroopers actually had red berets like this, and this is what comes with the Ultimate Soldier. And these two uh, are both sort of rubber. This one is like um, squishy rubber. Uh, this one is uh, not very, kind of bendy, but pretty solid overall. It's a little bendy around the edges. This one's got like a sticker for its emblem. This actually has a little piece of plastic that's been glued to it. And then this guy, the uh, dragon model, well, he actually comes with a felt beret with a very cool silver emblem attached to it. And this is the best looking one. Now, of the three, only the Ultimate Soldier comes with the paratroop helmet. And the paratroop helmets specifically don't have this big rim on them like other soldiers did because the rim of the helmet has a chance to cut the parachute. This, sometimes on these Ultimate Soldier guys I've seen actually have netting on them. Mine didn't come with netting, but I have seen these guys before with a variant of this helmet, the exact same helmet with netting on it. I think it'd be cool if they all came with netting and I think I'm going to try and put some sort of netting on this. I think that's really the look. This guy, the Dragon model, did not come with a helmet and that is kind of a bummer because this guy has really upscaled everything. Everything is a cloth good on this guy. You know, he doesn't come with any rubberized uh, ammo packs or anything like that. Um, he does have a pretty cool plastic gun, and it does look extremely uh, similar to the one that came with the Ultimate Soldier, which is kind of cool for continuity. Uh, just thinking that that's interesting. I believe you can put the, uh, it has an attachment for the bayonet on it, right? But everything about the Dragon model is definitely upscaled on it. And I would say that that is probably the top dog as far as if you're trying to get some sort of photography that looks realistic, right? But don't count out the other two. Now this guy, as I mentioned before, the G.I. Joe, his facial features um, are a little bit soft on camera. His face just kind of blends into itself. This guy has a real distinct looking face and this guy has an exceptional paint job on his face. But the mustache, I think, is just colored in, whereas in the uh, Ultimate Soldier, the mustache, I believe, is, uh, yeah, it's actually molded in and then painted. So this guy just sort of has painted mustache. And if you were a paint expert, ah, maybe you could paint it out or maybe you could paint something different, you know, that sort of thing. Leave it up to you. But for those of you out there who haven't seen you know, all three of these guys together as a sort of boy band. Well, this is an interesting look for you to decide if you want to go out and collect one of these guys, two of these guys, or all three of these guys. If you want to get multiples of these guys, if you just want to look for the 21st Century Toys paratrooper kits to build out a whole sort of um, platoon of action figures using different uh, bodies and heads but the same uniforms I think that would all be really cool if you could get the extra little packs cheap enough again I see people on eBay selling these extra accessory packs um, uh, for as much as you could just buy the whole action figure as is new in the box sometimes so I think that this is uh, about all I can really say on the matter is really, again, just about taking a look at all three and doing a little compare and contrast. I hope you got something out of this video and it was somewhat of an entertainment. And I'd also like to thank everybody and anybody who made it this far. I know sometimes it can be boring on some of these videos if it's not quite your bag. And I do appreciate it when you make it to this part of the vid. I'll catch everybody on the next one.